All right, let's talk about uh, some more interesting things. I, I want to talk about uh, <laughs> the reality of the internet as I see it. A house of shit built on lies. Chat, that's how I'm going to pull the curtain back a little bit and call it a house of shit built on lies. Probably for the last eight years. I feel, and I don't think this is really going out too far on a limb, that we are probably, uh, probably witnessing a proxy war uh, between uh, financially elite people, uh, corporatist industrialists, uh, battling one another using talking heads on the internet. And they create networks, and they do it through think tanks. And this is on the left and on the right. And I think Jack Murphy might be an example of that. And I think it's all money motivated. Uh, one case in point, I think I can I can point you towards. Uh, well, I can give you a couple examples, but let's let's start with something uh, more close to home. Let's talk about Milo Yiannopoulos. So Milo Yiannopoulos uh, was very big for quite some time. And Milo Yiannopoulos had financial backing from some very uh, powerful people that backed a lot of other people. This is uh, people who were associated with Bannon and others, but Bannon wasn't the money man. You know, Bannon was uh, one of those people that, you know, had connections at Breitbart and, of course, had connections to think tanks, but he wasn't the money man. But let's let's look at a few things so I can kind of set this up a bit for you. Let's start with this. It's a very peculiar thing that happened. Uh, back in, my God, how long ago was this? 2016. I had to find an archived article of this. I couldn't even find the original video when this happened. But I distinctly remember this happening, and I always thought it was very strange that this took place. So let's take a look at what this article says. Maya Lanopoulos, uh told not to speak of Pizzagate during Miami University lecture. Now, I remember the buildup to this. Milo had made some pretty grandiose claims. He said, I got some information that's going to blow your socks off. We're going to talk about some real shit related to, uh, at the time, the Pizzagate thing. And he came out on stage at this event, and he told people that he received a call from Washington, D.C. that told him he couldn't talk about it yet, and that he wasn't able to go over it. You see, the video is not available anymore. Uh, and then he left, and he went backstage again, and then he came back, and he did his presentation. But it was very fucking weird. Very weird. He was very hyped up. He had all this insider information. He had some extreme thing he was going to tell everybody. And then he gets a call from somebody in Washington that says, not yet, Milo. You can't talk about it yet, Milo. You got to keep a lid on it. Milo's like, I can't. I can't talk about this right now. So, well, maybe who was he talking to, right? Like, who, who would he be talking to? Who would, who would be reaching out to him? Well, let's talk about the Mercers. American billionaires created Milo Yiannopoulos. This is from 2017. And it goes on to really detail a, a particular duo of people that are connected to Bannon and others that have financed a lot of people on the right. Now, uh, the Mercers are billionaires, conservative billionaires, that financed quite a lot of shit going on. Uh, had their own pet projects they wanted to do. Uh, got people into positions. I, I don't think Milo was the only one. And nor am I saying is Milo part of some grand conspiracy. I think he just got tapped. I think they were like, we'll use you as a talking head. Got a bit of organic growth to you. We'll use you. I wouldn't you know, be surprised if people like Cernovich or others were probably a part of that as well. Now, why would I bring that up, right? I, I, it makes it seem like, oh, this must be a right wing thing. Oh, the left would never do this. Well, I, I'm sorry to tell any of the leftists out there, but uh, this is the exact same thing that's happening to you fuckers too. Uh, bread tube. Leaked files expose serious PSYOP veteran astroturfing bread tube star to counter COVID restriction critics. This is a, a policy, a project, that wants to psychologically profile British citizens uh, dissenting against mandatory policies using YouTubers. And this is run through the UK's royal institution and dubbed Challenging Pseudoscience. Its top patron, Charles Prince of Wales... Uh, uh, recently, you know, talking about all these conspiracy things, but this organization received a substantial cash injection in 2020 from the UK government's Culture Recovery Fund, earmarked for video production. Leaked files to the Grey Zone indicate that the Royal Institution has enlisted the service of Valent Projects, a social change communications firm founded by a public relations operative previously involved in the UK Foreign Office's campaign for violent regime change in Syria. Valent has also been sponsored by the US Agency for International Development, and a U.S. intelligent cu uh, cutout for a project called Investigating Disinformation. That's, that's the left. So you've got people financing the right, people financing the left. 
I mean, did you have you ever looked at BreadTube and thought to yourself, this is natural? Uh, you think Alexander, you think AOC goes on Donkey Kong fucking charity streams for no reason? Oh, look, another BreadTuber. H-Bomber guy. Why would a politician just decide to fucking go on to a, a, a YouTuber's bullshit? You want to talk about, you know, other weird shit? Uh, how about uh, scoop YouTube to fund the launch of the Young Turks local news academy? Oh, God. I wonder who, you know, profits from that. You've got the, the Young Turks and, of course, Hassan, who's related to St. Uger. And, of course, who shows up on Hassan's fucking uh, stream? Oh, AOC again. The very next year, after H-Bomber guy. Let's hit each one of them. Let's have those politicians get involved balls deep in each one of them. So you got BreadTube getting financed. You've got uh, the right wing getting financed. And, you know, I, I did a video maybe five or six years ago talking about uh, what I thought the future of the Internet was going to look like. And I talked about my envisioning of the future of the Internet as being a sanitized place. I called it a serendipitous conspiracy. You know, it was happenstance. It wasn't that the groups of individuals got together and decided to do this. They all happened to be moving in the same direction, governments, corporations, and powerful individuals. And this serendipitous conspiracy, really at the core of it, what did they want? They wanted to sanitize the internet, each for their own reasons, but they wanted to sanitize the internet. Uh, why did the rich people want to do it, the elite people? Well, they want to sell fucking Toyotas. I hate to break it to you. I know when you think Illuminati and all that shit, you think, oh, world-spanning fucking grandiose goals. No, they just want to sell you a fucking car. <laughs> they want to sell you a Toyota without people in comments saying the N-word. That's that's what the goal is, guys. I'm sorry. I know you think uh, you think Bilderberg Group is out there in the uh, the forest jacking off on owl statues. They're just trying to sell you fucking Toyotas, <laughs> and they do this by financing these fucking proxy wars through these different groups on the internet. And occasionally, somebody has a crazy side project, and they get somebody like Jack Murphy involved. <laughs> then his fucking followers go shoot people. I don't know. It's it's a weird world. It's a weird world. Uh, everybody's got these these money projects involved. But really, Jack Murphy, I think, is uh, potentially a red flag, a, a fucking warning sign of shit like that happening. You and I and all of us, whether regardless of your fucking politics or any of your interests, we're being put into a sanitized box where wild opinions don't exist anymore. And I, I'm not, I don't mean just like fucking conspiracy theory shit. I just mean independent opinions don't exist anymore. We're being told what to think and how to say things and what's acceptable. And all the opinions then that are pro-offered to us, right, are being financed by big money makers, king makers, fucking uh, think tanks that have their own agendas that want to sell you a Toyota. <laughs> it's fucking absurd. We live in an absurd, absurd world. But I'd like you to know that going forward because the next year is, of course, the year of the chud and these fucking cucks. <laughs> <laughs> These fucking cucks with their connections to big money are fucking with us. And understand that it's money. Money is always at the heart of everything. I, I know that we like to think that there are bigger reasons for shit that's going on, and sometimes there are. But at the heart of it, it's fucking money. At the end of the day, it's always going to be fucking money. You know, I, I'll, give you a, I'll give you an example. Let's talk Hollywood. You ever hear uh, get woke, go broke? Boy, we love saying that, don't we? We love watching one of our hobbies get shit on and destroyed. We talk about movies, video games, comics, whatever it is. But let's focus on movies for a second. Get woke, go broke. Oh, did you see what happened to that Hollywood studio? They put out that shitty movie and they lost all that money. Fuck them. Good. I hope they learned their lesson. Here's the truth. Um, Hollywood doesn't give a fuck because they already made money. I want you to go look up a term called Hollywood accounting. If you really want to understand why get woke, go broke doesn't mean shit. Um, they make money when they lose money because it's a giant fucking scam. Hollywood studios create subsidiaries that they pay for the service to produce the movie. Doesn't matter if the movie makes a fucking dime. They've already charged themselves so much money and fucked around on taxes that they've made a profit. Hollywood accounting explains every shitty independent film you've ever seen, every art project fucking thing you've ever seen, every shitty Ghostbusters movie you've ever seen. They don't give a fuck. They've made money. They don't care if the studio dies. They're parasites. That's kind of how it works. They're, they're just parasites there to make as much money as they can. So they pick something. Movies. We'll fuck movies into the dirt. Use Hollywood accounting. Video games. We'll fuck video games into the dirt. Use uh, our own uh, form of accounting. Comic books. We'll do it there too. Politics. Fuck it. Why not? We'll do it in politics as well. We'll make money everywhere we can make fucking money. Because fuck you. We don't care. All that matters to us is that we get uh, some kind of a profit. 
And so you've got, you know, I, I mean, let's look at Jack Murphy in particular. What, what do we have here? What makes him so desirable or approachable, right? As somebody that would be picked for something like this, say if that were the truth. <laughs> there are nefarious groups out there that were just looking to make some money and fuck with people. Uh, well, you want somebody, right, that's got somewhat of an organic appeal uh, that you can build off of uh, to create a group. All right, so you pick Jack Murphy. But the important thing, and this is really the important thing when you pick people like this, uh, they can't be good people. And I don't mean good as in, you know, righteous or moral. I mean good as in uh, not having a, a foundational flaw. You need somebody that's a little fucked up and dirty, right? And it usually has to be shame-related. Now, sex is good because you can exploit that. You're not always going to get a big banger like they're a pedophile, right, where it's just out in the open and, well, you can fuck with them forever with that. No, you need something that they're ashamed of. Yeah, they're closeted homosexual. They're, they're scared to announce that they're gay. So we can use that as leverage. Why would you need the leverage if you're going to boost them up and use them for whatever your purpose is? Well, because they're idiots. And idiots will think that success that you've given them is their own success. So when their ego gets out of control and they start talking out their ass about how they don't need your Mercer money anymore, you need to knock them back down. You might have seen that. That might have been what happened with Milo Yiannopoulos. I don't know. Milo starts getting big, gets a little bit cocky, and suddenly there are a lot of articles about sex shit, and Milo's gone. Jack Murphy, I don't know what happened. Maybe they popped the cork on that one a little too soon. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'm not going to be subjugated by big money cucks. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, chuds aren't going to roll over for that shit, chat. Let me tell you right now, all right? 2022 is the year of change. All you elite think tank groups on the left and the right using this facade of these fucking uh, internet talking heads. <laughs> Your cuck army. All right. Not happening anymore. I, I, I don't believe it anymore. Uh, you can you can fuck off with that. You know, another funny example of watching this happen in real time. You remember the Gro or Groipor War? You remember when Nick Fuentes was fucking with TPUSA? He was going after Charlie Kirk and uh, Seb Gorka and all of them. Um, here's what I noticed that happened every time he did this, and it always did make me chuckle a little bit. Every time Nick Fuentes would embarrass Charlie Kirk, or every time they would make Seb Gorka look stupid, uh, immediately, I'm talking like sometimes within fucking minutes, somebody on the Trump administration, maybe even a Trump themselves, like you know, uh, one of the juniors, would promote Charlie Kirk, uh, or they'd suddenly promote Seb Gorka. They'd have a new book or a new event, or they'd uh, uh, highly praise them almost immediately. And it was very transparent that they were saying, listen, uh, Groypers, you're not in, you're not on the inside. You're on the outside. You stay on the outside, all right? This is the money group. These are the people we've built up, the Charlie Kirks and the Gorkas. You're, this is who we're fucking putting forward. You know, uh, you stay over there. It was really surreal, to be honest, because there was a, a momentum going for Fuentes for a while when he was going after Kirk. But every fucking time, they would just suck Charlie Kirk's dick. It was it was really awe-inspiring. They'd suck Seb Gorka off. It was awe-inspiring. And that happened for months. Just a, a little quirky example. If you if you ever just kind of watch the timing of things take place and you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> they're, they're making it real clear who they're backing on this. Oh. <sighs> What a year, Chad. <laughs> Jack Murphy out here shoving things up his butt, making me think big thoughts. How one man goes from shoving a dildos up his ass to making me think about elites controlling YouTube, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But he's done it. Congratulations, Jack Murphy. You've, you've, you've made me, you've opened my eyes. Your asshole has opened my eyes and your ligma balls have enlightened me to the realities that are out there of what might be taking place on YouTube. <laughs> your glow is so bright you've illuminated the darkness your asshole's like a fucking uh, a lighthouse out on the ocean guiding my ship into port oh thank you so much Jack Murphy <laughs> for lighting the way for us humble travelers us chud butts <laughs>